and friends, I've actually had a pretty good day. I hope, I hope you have too. I'll tell you what, I didn't did get my bifocals out. Uh, I wear reading glasses out here when I'm working. I'm working right along, and I'm taking them and setting them down, and I'm picking them up. And Well, next thing you know, I put them out. I was like, oh, my God, I can't see nothing. One lens fell out. You ever had that happen? Yeah, I know somebody has. That, uh, I had to close one eye just to try to uh, look at my phone. It's like, oh, goodness, I had a message from a buddy, you know. Today's video is not about saws. It's not about dirt bikes. i tell you what I got for you. I have to come across a few of the family pictures. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures of our family way back. Some of them before my time. And some of them when I was just a little fart. And I'm going to do my very best to tell the stories that go along with some of these pictures. Or something, a stories that remind me of these pictures right here. Well, we might as well get it right out of our system. And let's stay right off of pictures of me and my brother. We used to go to Florida some. And uh, I don't know what age right there. Yeah, that's me. I'm the tall one. And that's my little brother, Greg, down on Daytona Beach. And uh, I'm four years older than him, so if you can just kind of guess, I think he was three maybe right there, so I was probably seven. And uh, I remember, this might take a long time, won't it? I remember that uh, when we come back from that trip, uh, shortly after, there was something right in my front of my uh, lower leg. It got hurt, and I got a big old bump. And uh, I wasn't sure what it was. I won't tell my mom and dad. They'd try to take me to the freaking hospital or try to, worse yet, work on me. No, I don't need a Band-Aid. I'm not bleeding that bad. You know what it ended up being? Well, rare than playing. <laughs> Uh, some of them she seashells are just a spiral shape. Well, about a little half inch long piece of one of them had went in right in my leg, and I never knew it. When you're a kid, that happens when you're rough, kid. Yeah, I, I read some of your comments on the last video. I know what you guys are all about. So that, that's what happened there. Now, I'm going to show you one of the few pictures I have of Cohen as a baby. This is with his mama. Um... Barbara's not his mama. Uh, this was a relationship that just was doomed from the beginning. And uh, if we'd have known what was wrong, she's bipolar. And she became bipolar after having Amber. Well, if you ever met Amber as an adult, you'd probably understand that there's more to it than just that. But here's a picture of Cohen's mom, Deanna, with Holden Cohen. In that curious little amber right there. That's one of the few pictures I got of her. Uh, boy, I could tell you stories about her. She was some kind of wild one. I'm going to tell you what. Don't marry a beautiful girl. Don't do it. Your friends get real interested and you got you got to face something then. I'm just telling you the way. It, I'm not going into details, but you can guess. You really can. Now, a lot of people said that I looked like my grandfather right a lot. Well, I'll show you a picture. I don't know. Some of these are dated. Some of them ain't. Now, this was my grandfather right. I'm going to say that was probably 1955 or something, 54. Uh, I know that's a 49 Ford up back, and that was my mom's car. But my grandfather's the one uh, throwing wood. That was the guy that's uh, splitting wood right there is uh, Dale St. Peter. He was in the Air Force in the Korean War with my dad. So he, I think this was one of the visits after they got out of the military. Now my granddad, now you look at the chunk of wood that he's picking up with his left hand there. Uh, he was a strong man. My granddad got me in so much trouble sometimes just by having fun. I'm going to tell you what he did. Um, I was a fairly young little kid, 
And, uh, you know, he taught me how, how before I went to kindergarten, that man taught me how to use a measuring tape to quarter inches. He showed me, and I'll never forget it. And there's pictures of this, too. Um, with a handsaw, you stoke your thumb right up on the blade, and, and you draw it back, and, and, and you cut with a handsaw like that. That's how you get it started. That You can get your blade uh, true that way. And there's a picture of my granddad standing on the end of a board with me, just a little feller, cutting a board off. Uh, what he'd actually taught me to do is how to build toaster carts. Uh, before I went to kindergarten, I was, was getting into it. It took another two years before I got real good at it. But, boy, now that's some stories I'll tell for another time. I've told him once about them coaster carts we used to build. But I thought you'd be interested. Now, my granddad was a fireman for many years on the New York Central Railroad. And he was, and I, I've told this before, but I'll tell it again. Uh, he uh, was in a, in PA, was in a head-on collision with another locomotive. And uh, the boiler and the other train blew up, and it killed them. They killed the engineer and grandpa's train. The rake from the firebox, that little porthole window on the side, it went from the other engine and hit my granddad in the head. He ended up with a silver plate in his head, which ended up, corroding and causing him some pretty good problems uh, that uh, you just don't come back from some of that stuff pretty bad do you but that, that's kind of what he did now my dad was into all kinds of things he well I remember when he rebuilt an old boat one time and he did a good job and we actually went out on that boat quite a bit but I'll tell you what else he liked he liked rodeo this is my dad right here this was probably 19... 59 or, or 60, something like that. The feller uh, beside him is Mick Sanford. Uh, they, that was his horse, Cedar, right there. He got her from Oklahoma. Cedar wasn't a big horse. I remember that uh, them telling it they brought her in on a train car. And uh, she was a cattle horse. She, she'd worked. She knew what cows were. She was real good at it. One hell of a roper. You can tell by the way she's built those of you that know horses, roping horses, that she was good. But Dad wasn't. No, he couldn't rope good. He just wanted to rope good. Let me tell you about something that happened. Boy, I love this chair. I love sitting here talking to you guys. I wish you was sitting right here. This would be so much better because I could hear you laughing. And I hear, you know, but this is good enough for right now. Buck and stock or whatever, wherever we all get to meet, then, then we're going to be having a ball. I just believe me. Anyways, Vic Howland up the road. He's gone now. Now, Vic worked down to Ingersoll Rand at the same time Dad did. He was a machinist. And uh, had, uh, I know that I was just a wee lad. And what happened is Vix Herford's got out. Now, there's Herford's, and then there's Oh My God Herford's. Well, Vic had them Oh My God ones. Yeah, they were kind of like Free Ranger. They had a big pasture. They had all the food and water they drank, and they weren't handled much. Well, they got out. Vic comes down and sees Dad. Because back then, it was really from, you know, it just quicker, just run down the road, you know. He says, Hi, he says, can you help me? My, my cows are out. Why, sure. He says, you might need your horse. You got your rope, right? Yep. So, and I just vaguely remember this. He got on that horse, and he got all due to duck, put his best cowboy hat on, which he was wearing in one of them pictures of Stetson. And I'll tell you what, up over the hill he went chasing horses. And the cows were running that way over. See, there's a big bench and then another hill and then another big bench. This way it is here. And lots of fields and fences. 
And them cows are running it this way. And then the rope, and he got that rope a-going, hee-haw, and cows turn right around, split, and run right by him, and your way he goes that way. So he tosses his darn rope, and he's running a mile a minute, and I guess they roped one. Well, that horse, it was a bull. Or was a short. That horse draw dad up and dad. Yep, next thing you know, that bull charges that horse. Well, here's where dad lost his hat. The minute that Hereford bull charged, and this horse has got shoes. Well, he, that, he she kicked that bull right in the freaking head. Boom, spun in a circle. Dad lost his hat. So he manages to get that bull where it's supposed to go. Now you'd think with a bull that maybe you'd have a chance at a few of the cows or something. You know what? Them cows must have hated that bull. They ran the other way. So he gets the bull in. And Vic had repaired the break in the fence by this time. And Dad didn't find his hat till much later. But it got worse. He had cows all over this valley. And, uh, I'll tell you what, my grandpa Wright, he's standing there shaking his head. Yep, that grandpa right there. He looked at mom and he says, he's got a lot of heart, but he don't know nothing about roping. Well, mom was getting defensive and, defensive and looking at him. And uh, grandpa says, I don't know nothing about roping, but he's on how to catch cows. And so he went up back. In this little shed, right here, which was actually supposed to be a garage, but it was more than just that. And he got two buckets of corn, because he had chickens. And he walks up over the hill, and he's hollering good boss. And Dad's a running and a rearing and trying to rope, but he came, oh my goodness sakes, it, uh, things weren't going good. Grandpa's just walking into the freaking gate. And he says, kibos, and he just lets a little corn dribble here and there. And boy, one cow perks up. She goes over and finds that corn. They were used to corn their grass, huh? Well, next thing you know, you got a whole herd of about 50 cows bawling and bellering trying to get through that gate. I don't know how long it took to get Dad through the gate, but I know that as an, when I got older and I'd ask him exactly what happened, Oh, he says, you wouldn't understand. That's the way that went. Yeah, I'm never going to get all these in. Uh, Dad loved his horses. Now, that horse, Sita, would just stand there with him. Dad's about 6'3". And uh, we had picnics. Early spring, and I remember one particular year. Now, Sita, you could let her loose, and uh, she just hang around. She was a very polite horse. She really had good manners, and uh, well, they set up three picnic tables. And you know, back in the early '60s, this is where this is '62, three, four, something like that. Five. I was a little kid. Um, I remember walking up to see it and grabbing her leg. Hell, it was that big around then, you know, this old little kid. Well, I'll tell you what, there was something about macaroni salad that drove that freaking horse bonkers, and she dove right in that. She did. She put, reached right over somebody. They were doing prayer. That's Baptists, okay? These are Baptists. They were, they were having a prayer. Boy, that horse reached right over somebody and put her nose right in and grabbed a big mouthful of macaroni salad. And then she run off. That was the game was on then. Oh, I'll tell you what kind of took my grandmother off, but that was that. That's what happened. It uh now I'm gonna tell you something. My dad was a pilot. He actually learned to fly in uh in in uh, the Korean War in the Air Force. Uh, he didn't get a license or anything, but he did fly. There was a one of his uh, upper unit commanders uh, flew, and he wanted to get some pictures of uh, Japan from the air, and he'd had to take Dad with him, and Dad would either run a camera or fly, and so he got the bug. He gets out of the service, and 
he got his pilot's license, and and he actually went quite a long ways flying. He did. Now, Dad's job in the Air Force is he uh, he worked on engines and power plants and airframes. So he did a lot of that. Well, here is one of his planes. I was trying to find another, but that yeah, that's me. Is a little tight right there. Uh, let's see what the date on this. Uh, one of these pictures have had a date, but I can't remember what it is. I think that was like 1963, 62 maybe. That's a Cessna 195. Yeah, it had a big old radial engine. But you can see right here where there was uh, damage. That was a new uh, landing gear. Um and this plane had a bad wing temp, and it had been belly flopped. Well, Dad bought the plane, and uh, it was, we bought it wrecked, so he got it right. Well, they knocked two jugs off or damaged two cylinders, and Dad went and put the cylinders on it. And, and he ended up with a freaking uh, uh, landing gear that was a little shorter than that off an egg cat. Yeah, about eight inches shorter. Now, if you ever, any of you that ever fly, try to land with one landing gear eight inches shorter, that's a little bit of a problem. And those of you the pilots already know that not a lot of pilots could actually fly one of them Cessna 195s without taking their life in their hands. Although they were a safe aircraft, you just couldn't see anything taking off or landing. You, the minute you flared, you runway's gone. Well, he rebuilt this darn airplane. I'll tell you what, he flew the heck out of it. Um, he was a very, very good pilot. Now, I'll show you a picture. Uh, this is of Mrs. Reenie White from Earl Irwin Howell in Painted Post, New York. She was uh, 81 years old as of April 1967. And now that's Dad with a Skyhawk. You can tell which one's Dad, can't you? And uh, let me tell you a little story about her. She was a friend of the family. And she'd never been in an airplane in her life. She always had a fear of it. You know, and you got to remember the, what she'd seen in airplanes. Them early airplanes probably weren't too safe. And uh, for whatever reason, she decided that she wanted to uh, go for an airplane ride. And she asked Dad, she says, I want you to be the one that does it. Okay. And he, he got thinking about it. And he says, well, I know you you have heart medication. I'm telling you, yes, yes, I do. I see, He says, do you think maybe you ought to have your doctor clear to go for a little ride? She says, I want to go down and uh, see the mountains down in PA. That's what I want to see. The PA Grand Canyon. I've never seen that neither. And I want to kill two birds with one stone. Well, her doctor gave her clearance. And I was there the day that they took off. And she got in that airplane. Oh, head sick. I'm just so nervous. You know. And uh, it, uh, that was kind of funny actually. What happened was. She got in that darn airplane. And she didn't like the takeoff very much. She told Dad on the takeoff, slow down. <laughs> Not a good time to slow down, all right? They get in the air. Once you get up about 800 feet, it's not real anymore. You don't realize how far out the ground you are. You don't get It won't bother you. And they went down to PA Grand Canyon, and it ain't a long ways by airplane from here. And uh, she got good pictures of one thing or another, and... Uh, had a grand old time. That made that old lady's day. It did. It really did. And uh, now, Dad made uh, national newspaper, the UPI. You remember that? Uh, they got made national news. Uh, they had the papers from Corning and Elmira was there when they landed. And nobody expected that. But word got out. I think the owner of the airport said something to somebody. Uh, that was real interesting. It really was. But... Uh, them old airplanes. Uh, now that Cessna one in ninety five, what that was, that was uh, a general's plane. It was the executive model, and uh, it uh, Dad had uh, repainted it, but that was in the colors right there that that 
it was when it was in the military, I believe. And uh, I know if I can find some later pictures of that airplane, he painted that with Imran paint. Lyle Jackson helped him. And uh, they painted it right here, right beside the house. Now, they painted it like forest green, white, with a black stripe. And, oh, my goodness sakes, that was pretty. That was pretty. Yeah, they painted right beside my, just right across the way from here. But I'm going to tell you something. There was a lot of people seeing him bring that airplane in. As you can tell, that's not exactly little. But it's a short takeoff and landing. That's what, That's why they, they used them for medevac also in the Korean War. And because uh, they really had pretty big motor for the weight of the plane. And, uh. Uh, goodness sakes, he come in low and slow over the trees in this field. Now, I don't know how long that field is, but it ain't very darn long. And then it's also at a little bit of an angle, and there's a big bow in the middle of it. And uh, so it ain't dead level either. But I remember seeing that plane coming in floating like this over the tree, and I'm just a little fella. And I'm watching that, and there was something hit my head. It's like... That's going down faster, and it's going forward, you know. I, I couldn't put the relationship together. I mean, I'd watched him take off and land with that at airports. I, I knew. Well, all of a sudden, he jammed a throttle on. All of a sudden, the plane just kind of whoomp like that. On the ground, it went. He rolled right up. He didn't have He didn't have much room. He had 10 feet to the hedgerow when he stopped. I remember that, because when he's on the brakes hard, you know, aircraft, what it is, is... You steer with your feet, but when you roll your toes forward, that's your brakes. And uh, I remember that uh, coming up off the tail wheel. I remember that. Well, he did taxi it up by the house. and It took a few weeks for Dad and Lyle to prep that plane, do everything, paint that. Well, it come the day, take that airplane off. Now, we got 8 millimeter uh, video of this. If we can find it, I don't know where it is. There's a bunch of that around here, but I don't know where. If we do, we'll show you some really cool stuff to, from way back. But I can tell you about it, because I don't forget nothing. They backed that aircraft right in the hedgerow, because what it is, it's a hedgerow and a hedgerow and a field in between. That's all there is to it, and there's box elder trees on each end, and they're probably 40 feet high. Well, Dad went out down through that field, measured that out, and he drove a big stake with a flag on it. And Mom says, what's that for? He says, that's the plane, no return. Well, she liked the way that sounded. He says, no. He says, if by the time I get here, if I'm not in the air, he says, I still got time to stop. Okay. Maybe he fudged the stake a little bit, because I'll tell you what happened. They backed that in the trees, and I'll never forget this. He had wheel chocks, and uh, he had his toes on the brakes, and he pegged that uh, throttle. He was right on the, on the firewall. I mean, this is the way it is. You know, you've heard for a lot of years something that came out of World War II and, and Korean War and stuff. They have a ball on the, some of the those aircraft. This one particularly uh, was in the dash like the 172s are. But when you go past the normal operations knots, in this case pulling it, they have another. It's That ball will go right to the firewall. That's where people say he's going balls to the wall. It was the ball on the throttle was touching the firewall. It was an override. That was maximum power. That's where that saying came from. So he's going balls to the wall here. And he lets off them freaking uh, uh, brakes and jump them chocks. And uh, that, that kind of scared me. Now, you know that airplane. You can see how little I was on this picture right here. I wasn't very big. I walk right under that dang motor. Boy, I tell you what, every time he started that, that scared the crap out of me. It did. 
Oh, I never heard something. This sounded like 10 Harley Davidsons. It was having a problem with each other, you know. And to Jesus, it was something else. So he gets going down through there, and he gets into the low part and where the, the field tips over, and he's a rearing up through, and I'm watching that tailwheel ain't come up yet, and I know this. It's got to happen. By the time he hit that stake there, the point of no return, Mom goes, because <gasps> he wasn't off the ground yet. Little and all, wheels come up, and it just a play like this, all oh, that old radial engine, just roaring. And he had that nose up, but that plane was doing this. He was fighting that, because there's trees ahead of him. And all of a sudden, by dumbass luck or uh, divine providence from the good Lord, there was a big wind gust come up that valley. That airplane jumped up in the air, and he caught with the prop. Some little limbs off and leaves went flying everywhere. And that is on that video if we can find it. And I'll tell you what. He flew that in down to Costa's airport down and paid a post. And that's that's where he kept the plane a lot. And uh, Mom, me, went down. Granny Grandma might have went too. And uh, I think Grandpa, he's not going to see enough of that. I want to watch that again. He says, got my heart in my throat. So they went down, and we picked him up. Joe Costa, old Joe, he says, he was telling the dad, he says, I've seen where your plane is. You ain't getting out of that field. Dad says, I'll fly her out of there. Well, he did. But dad didn't tell him about that wind gust. Yes, sir, he did not. He says, well, geez, you got a great place to land then, right by your house then. No, he says, Joe, I don't. He says, I'm never doing that again. He says, I, I'm i not doing that again. He didn't. Uh, we have, I knew this was going to happen. I knew darn well that I'd never be able to get all these in. This is, I know the picture's faded, just bear with me. But this is kind of what they look like. Uh... They were actually a beautiful plane, and they, oh, I loved, right, I loved flying in that plane, I loved it, I did. You know all military, military aircraft have that same smell, any of has been in a 130 or 141 or anything when he's in the military, or, or anything, there is a smell in military aircraft that from World War II, Dad had a Corsair F4U, that had that same smell as this airplane, uh, I don't know what that smell is. Any, every military aircraft has. Even when I was in the military, the, the planes that I was in had that same exact smell. Um, I don't know how many of these videos we ought to do like this. Uh, I know they're not going to get a lot of views. This is for you guys and for me is what this is. Um, I didn't monetize the last one. Because I wanted to give you a little break. And I'm not going to monetize this one. This is personal, okay? Uh, and I think I'm going to try that once in a while. Because you know what I learned? I hate commercials. Um, Yeah, I need the money. I really do. But if I hate them, you guys hate them too. So I'm going to slide one in once in a while. That it's not that big a deal. There's more to life for me at 60 years old than money. There really is. Oh, yeah, I could use bagfuls right now and have all kinds of places that help me out. You know, especially with every damn thing I got broke down all at the same time, it seems like, this year. Yeah, I've had an awful time. Awful. But we don't worry about them little things. That all, too, will still pass. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks a lot. You're my friends and you're my family. And it means so much to me. Keep the comments rolling. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me what you're thinking. If you've got stories of your own, I I don't care if it's a long comment. I read them. I really do. And I don't get to answer many anymore, but I, I try here and there. Thank you so much for being here. Goodbye.